Welcome everyone to today's CSIA Partner Webinar Series. My name is Violeta Aceramo and I will be your host today. For those of you who are unfamiliar with CSIA, we are a global nonprofit professional association with over 500 member companies in 40 countries. Our mission is to advance the practice of control system integration to, our, to benefit our member and their clients. Our vision is to ensure that manufacturing and process industries everywhere have access to low risk, safe and successful application of automation technology. CSIA membership offers members access to resources needed to attain and exceed business goals. To highlight just a few of our many member benefits, the CSIA Pre Best Practices Manual guides control system integration companies in the setup and running of a solid company. CSIA's Business Insurance Program offers members an excellent insurance program for business owners, subcontractors, and more. The program includes members from all over the world enjoying the peace of mind that comes with CSIA insurance. Clients in all industries are now seeking integrators with a CSIA certification alongside ISO. They recognize CSIA certified integrators' commitment to industry standards and business acumen. As a result, being certified can shorten the sales cycle. CSIA Industrial Automation Exchange is a premier automation guide featuring system integrators and suppliers who provide industrial, manufacturing, and process automation solutions. For integrators and suppliers, it's a place to market their expertise. Clients will find white papers, case studies, capabilities, contact information, and engage in conversation directly with CSIA members. Please follow CSIA's online events calendars for all upcoming webinars, including both partner webinars and business webinars. CSIA's business webinars feature topics handpicked by CSIA leadership to help you run your business. CSIA's partner webinars are opportunities given to CSIA's industry partner to address hot topics and demonstrate their expertise. You won't wanna miss these opportunities to learn from the comfort of your own office or home. For more information about CSIA, please visit our website or contact us at info at staff.controlsys.org or call us at 847-686-2245. And at this time, I would like to introduce our presenters, Ted Rosier and Mike Nager. Okay, great. Um, let me see. Let's get a set up. Okay, welcome everyone. Thank you for attending our, our seminar. Hopefully you're seeing my, my first slide up on the screen. Uh, my name is Mike Neger, and I'm gonna be kicking off uh, this introduction to visualization, very important topic in today's manufacturing environment. And we're actually splitting it up between two different speakers. So uh, I'm at the top, my name is Mike Neger. I work for the company Festo Didactic, located in New Jersey. And my colleague, uh, Ted Rozier, uh, is also going to speak uh, today. We both work out of the same office in the Solution Center. So we do customized solutions uh, for our customers. And I'll talk a little bit about who those customers are and what types of solutions uh, we have. So what we've put together is about 40, 45 minutes of material. Where we'll start with an introduction and um, uh, introduction to us and to Festo Didactic, and then talk about Industry 4.0, especially uh, when it comes to industry education and training. And uh, we'll talk a little bit about how data is collected and visualized in the manufacturing process and how we incorporate it into our own uh, product line. And then Ted will uh, join in um, and do a deeper uh, dive into the technology and the power of the vis visualization topic. So uh, uh, Festo Didactic, uh, that's the company that we work for. And we provide training and education solutions for technical schools, colleges, universities, and corporate training centers. So we're in a very unique um, uh, uh, business. You might recognize the name Festo. Our sister company, Festo Automation, is a worldwide supplier of pneumatic and electronic control equipment. I'm sure many of the members that are on the, the webinar today are familiar with that. 
and has about 20,000 employees worldwide. So a, a major player in the automation uh, space. Festo Didactic, who I work for, the sister company, um, works very closely with Festo Automation in learning the latest manufacturing techniques. You know, we manufacture in southern Germany, in the U.S., in China, other parts of the world, in highly automated factories. So when we want to talk to universities, schools, and industry training partners, we're doing so from a, a very strong position because uh, we actually do manufacturing ourselves. You know? um, and what we think gives us a unique advantage is we really have a holistic approach between industry and education. So what we do in the automation division, we bring into our education so that students get to learn using real equipment, real robots, real PLCs, real HMIs, right, you know, starting in high school. So we do a lot of high school programs, community college, technical schools. And then uh, we also have training and consulting. So a lot of our industry partners will send employees back to us to brush up on skills, to learn a new skill set, uh, uh, things of that nature. And we've been doing it for quite some time. So uh, the company got started back in 1925. And in 1965, the Festo Didactic Division was established as an entity. In uh, 2014, there was a merger with a US-based company called LabVolt, which was located in New Jersey. That's why we're in New Jersey right now. And uh, uh, that's how we increased our footprint in the US. And just to give you an idea of the sectors that we provide training equipment uh, for uh, all the manufacturing, both discrete and process automation uh, equipment uh, we develop. And why are we doing this? Well, as technology increases, as IIoT becomes more prevalent in the manufacturing space, there's new jobs and new skills that are required. So here's a whole bunch of new job titles that probably 10 years ago wouldn't have made too much sense, but we're seeing them to start to pop up. And where are the people that have these skill sets gonna come from? Well, that's what we are charged with working with our education uh, system uh, to provide. And a big driver of this is Industry 4.0. So if you're familiar with Industry 4.0, that's a terminology that came from Germany originally. And its basic premise is that there has been several industrial revolutions, starting with the steam engine and mechanization back in the the 19th century, all the way up through assembly lines and PLCs. And the philosophy is, is that we are now in the midst of the fourth industrial revolution. And the fourth industrial revolution means that systems are combined together, the physical world and the cyber physical world, all working together uh, to produce uh, products and information. So that is providing a bunch of challenges to industry. I, I took this um, from a system integrator. I think it's one of the CSIA members. It was a real nice uh, graphic showing what is it that's really pushing manufacturing trends uh, right now. So the big, biggest trend is the personalization of product. So the mass production model uh, worked great for many decades, but what consumers and customers are demanding are smaller and smaller batch sizes, more customized and configured products suitable just for the needs of that particular customer. And the lines that were, were made to mass produce really weren't well suited to be able to do any sort of personalization, right? The old joke was Henry Ford said you could have a a Model T Ford of any color as long as you pick black, right? So being able to limit the choices of the consumers and the customers allowed mass production techniques to work really well. But that's changing. People want customized products. And how do you get all the information that's needed on the plant floor 
in order to produce a, a customized product. So that's really the, the main driver. The other ones also come into play. Uh, machine safety, of course, is very important. And also predictive maintenance is um, something that manufacturers are all striving uh, towards. What's driving this industry 4.0? Well, um, one of our good consultants at West Virginia University put this graphic together. And it's really the combination of information technology getting onto the plant floor um, more and more and more. Okay, So as that information technology gets adopted onto the plant floor, uh, this drives up the capability and to provide a smart manufacturing system that can provide those personalized products. And we have a, an industry 4.0 poster that we use to describe how complex this new environment is. So now we have communication, not only up and down in the manufacturing plant, but also sideways uh, towards the suppliers and also towards the customers. So here, it's a very complex picture. It's not simple. The control pyramid of of yesteryear is starting to, to show its age and we have communication uh, back and forth um, between all different types of um, players and industries. And how do you visualize that data? That becomes very important when you want to share information up and down and across uh, the different types of enterprise. So here I highlighted what we're talking about today uh, one is the MES system, the Mac Manufacturing Execution System, and then real-time data and key data being displayed on an HMI. So in our own systems that we develop for training of uh, technicians and engineers, where we collect many different types of, of data in our system. And this is really what a, a, a real enterprise or factory uh, handle. So with data types, there's, there's three main types of data, uh, customer information, and that can be contact information. It can be what type of orders they have uh, uh, placed. Product information, what is the product? What are the operations? What are the variations of that product that the customer is ordering? And then machine resources and, and health. So we're we're collecting data from these three main buckets and making it readily available in real time to everybody that needs to know uh, uh, the status of it. So uh, machine health, you know, comes into the preventive maintenance and, you know, some things that we've incorporated are vibration and temperature monitoring. We can look at the energy consumption. If energy consumption spikes, that could be indicative of a of a problem, we can measure the air pressure in the pneumatic lines and the flow rates and determine if the filters are dirty and need to be replaced, uh, things of that nature. So those are the main types of data that are collected in the manufacturing operation that has to be shared uh, effectively. Uh, the way that we do it is we have a database that the MES system communicates to and we also have RFID tags in the product that we've created for, um, for students to, to, to learn on. And this is dynamic communication. So it's not static. As the product goes down in the manufacturing process through each of its operations, that RFID tag is updated and also communicated back, communicated back to the database. So this is real time. Uh, if, if, if there's a couple seconds of lag time, that would be a lot, but that is a dynamic exchange of information throughout the entire manufacturing process. And then finally, uh, you have to analyze all that data that you've collected, and we do that with dashboards. And this is probably something that's very similar to many of the members uh, that are listening today. I'm sure that Quite a few of you have developed a, a dashboard or two in your careers, and we look at things like OEE, um, overall equipment effectiveness, and other uh, benchmarks. 
all in real time. So this is all happening instantaneously. No more black box, no more lag uh, time between uh, uh, finding out uh, that information uh, stream. So when we get into the display, you know, one, one way that we do it, and many people do it, is we'll have an HMI showing information about a single process of a PLC. So here's, you know, a Rockwell automation version, and this PLC is controlling, you know, some sort of uh, 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 vat, you know, of, of uh, temperature, and it's being displayed uh, right there on the screen. Okay, so the HMIs, you know, at first kind of replace the operator panels, the push buttons on the machine. Uh, but as you're going to see, it's become a lot more uh, complex um, and a lot more interactive. So that's one way, you know, that the visualization on the plant floor happens, uh, looking at it at a PLC. On other projects, uh, we use one HMI to monitor several processes. So, you know, everything is based on Ethernet now. So uh, it makes it easy. We can use uh, managed switches or unmanaged switches, get the information from each of the processes into a main operator screen. Now that operator screen is interactive. The push buttons can start and stop the process and key information can be displayed on there. We had an open house in, in New Jersey a couple of years ago. We did have a system integrator uh, come. It was part of an IEEE ISA event. And, uh, and they made a big point of saying, yeah, you know, HMI screens are a big deal and creating them correctly um, is, is not easy and uh, has developed a whole bunch of best practices. So a best practice is shown on the right, you know, a very clean screen and not too many colors that kind of uh, hurt your eyes. So, uh, you know, there's an art and a science to creating these uh, HMIs. So uh, that's in general uh, how we're doing it. How do we use it specifically in training equipment? So, you know, say you're a student just starting out day one, learning about automation and control. We call these suitcase trainers. They consist of a PLC and then a whole bunch of switches and um, uh, connectors here that external devices can be attached to. You can write your program and display it on the HMI that's built right into that uh, suitcase trainer. And then as you get more experience and you move up, you start looking at systems. So not just individual PLCs and individual sensors, but how does it all start to work together? So here we have a industry 4.0 mechatronics training system. You'll notice that there's three PLCs at the bottom controlling each one of the processes that's running on the top. And they're communicating to a ethernet switch and being displayed on the HMI screen here. And we also put a display um, on here so that um, guests and observers can see more clearly what's going on. So that's a powerful way of showing what's going on in this process. Here's another uh, example of the equipment that we have. Here is an HMI, and this is a conveyor belt that is running the workpiece back and, back and forth. Here's a little better view of what an entire system uh, might look like. So um, this is a picture of our cyber physical factory. The cyber physical, physical factory uh, really uses a lot of visualization uh, techniques. You can see here on every station of the cyber physical factory, uh, you do have an, an HMI uh, being displayed. So with that, I'm gonna run a little video uh, that shows this in action. So let me just set that up and it's about two minutes long. So let's hear it.
Okay, so I, I hope you enjoyed that video. Uh, what I'm going to do um, now is turn it over to my colleague Ted Rozier, who's going to talk um, uh, more in depth about the MES and the HMI technologies. So, Ted, if you can, um, you can start sharing the screen and have the presentation. Okay, yeah, I'm seeing your screen now, but I'm not hearing anything. Very good, very good, Mike. <clears throat> Thanks so much for uh, for handling the introduction and then kind of going over um, data uh, as well as uh, what types of data that, that we actually collect uh, when we talk about uh, what it is that we visualize. Um, let's see, Mike, if you can just confirm that you can hear me clearly. Yes, Ted, you're coming through uh, uh, very clearly. All right, fantastic. Okay. Good deal. So uh, for the next few minutes, uh, next 15 minutes, what we're going to do is, is kind of take a deep dive. Uh, when we talk about visualization, what is it exactly that uh, we're visualizing it and why uh, is it so important for us to have HMIs versus uh, MES or a manufacturing execution system? Um, so th the first thing that we'll do is we'll, we'll kind of just talk about uh, the classic pyramid. Um, and, and I'm sure that you all have uh, know about the automation stack is what we call it on the left-hand side of this slide here, uh, where we talk about um, uh, the PLC, HMI, you have SCADA at the top of SCADA, you then have MES, which then connects you to the uh, enterprise. And, 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 and the reason why we show that automation stack there uh, is because it's very important for us to have a clear understanding of um, where data is coming from. And if the stack up is not done properly, um, it, it's not going to allow you to be able to figure out what's going on on the shop floor um, and how do I uh, make a good decision uh, and, and, and when we talk about making decisions, it's not just about visualization, but it's always about uh, being able to gather data um, and, and then parse that data and figure out what's the best decision to make. And that needs to be automated. But today, uh, we are going to focus on the visualization side of things. So if you look on the right hand side, um, you see of course, the classic pyramid, but then on the right, now you see uh, uh, what we call the new automation stack of flexibility and adaptability. So adaptability is so important when it comes to making sure that a system that is actually industry 4.0 already, when it comes to collecting that data, it has to be a flexible uh, manufacturing uh, architecture. Now, the other thing that we have to keep in mind is you look at the stack here, and when you look on the right-hand side, um, there is a channel of communication, and that's through a PLC. Um, and we teach that on the uh, uh, within the education market. Um, but another hot topic here is also operating on the edge. And if you were to operate on the edge, which is uh, basically bypassing the PLC, um, that architecture can take you directly uh, to the MES level. Um, and, and there's all kinds of protocols that are put in place to, to, to allow that to happen. Uh, but today, as we kind of go through our discussion um, about visualization, uh, we, we will touch on that a bit. To kind of make sure that we're all on the same track, um, I, I just want you to picture this here with me. And this this is the Industry 4.0 Maturity Index. So this allows you to kind of step through uh, Industry 4.0, the different sectors. Okay, so we're going to start off with computerization. Then we go to connectivity. Then we get into uh, number three, which is visibility, transparency, predictive capacity, and then adaptability. So when we look at one and two, and when we uh, gauge one and two today. It's very clear that when it comes to computerization and connectivity, we are there. We're seeing that on the automation manufacturing floor today. Um, and then what happens is if you do it 
right, if you handle computerization and connectivity properly, you're going to be able to now see what's happening. You're going to get into visibility. So I'm going to kind of do a deep dive because visibility defines visualization. Visibility would be seeing what's happening. So if we do a deep dive into visibility, what does that mean? Um, earlier in the year, uh, we, 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 we brought all of our uh, channel partners in and we took a deep dive just into visibility. And we, uh, the, the name of that was, how do you sell what you can't see? And so we did, took that deep dive and we defined programming languages. We defined the analyzation tools. We defined the parameterization tools software configuration tools, as well as communication protocols. So we took a deep dive in there and, and so, so that you can truly see that if you are at connectivity, number two, then visibility, you're going to be able to, to actually visualize that data. Now that leads us to this slide here. And we kind of go back really quickly to the data collection uh, column here. So if you start on the left-hand side, we talk about data. You see, you can't visualize what you can't see. And we have to look at that from the standpoint of, okay, what am I looking for? So you start off with data collection on the left-hand side and you see that there's PLC and then also data on the edge. So when it comes to PLC, of course, that's data that I'm going to be able to, I'm going to find out exactly what's happening um, on my shop floor all of my sensors. Uh, now, of course, my HMI is connected to that, and we'll talk about that a bit, but just look at each one of these uh, columns, that if I have the proper control architecture, uh, what we would call the data conduit, you see that it's going to lead me to transparency, understanding what is happening. But I'm looking for data collection. I'm looking for transformation. Um, when we talk about uh, exploration, uh, a lot of you know about artificial intelligence and what it's doing, okay? But it all needs to uh, sit within the control architecture in order to capture everything, um, all of the different data types. Um, we also have modeling um, uh, and, and then analysis. So am I able to analyze the data that I'm looking and can I scrub and parse that data again and push it back into my system so that the uh, world of robotics and the, the, the conveyor systems, et cetera, that um, pushing that real-time data back to all of those products um, and allowing the operator to have an understanding of how many widgets am I making? And am I making them on time? And if I need to make an adjustment, is it is my control platform set up for success in the future? So you can see with visualization at the end, if we have this stack up and the architecture is set up properly, then now we get to transparency. So what kind of data am I looking for? That's always a question when it comes to visualization. Well, we talked about PLC data, but what do I want out of the PLC? Well, I need to know my in feed. I need to know my out feed. I need to know how much material am I on? I, am I wasting? And I need to know what's the state of the equipment at all times. I also need to know on my MES platform of system availability, quality, and then the performance. How many parts am I making? And then when you're all the visualization, you have what tools should I be looking at? What tools should I have? And that's going to be, of course, the MES uh, and HMI, and also mobile devices. I can use those three tools, and they should all be in sync. They might be used for different uh, capabilities or uh, different tasks, but they should all be aligned and sync together, okay? So this here just shows a, a system, and, and of course, when it comes to visualization tools, you want your mobile devices, you want your HMI, and you want that MES platform uh, to all be aligned. That's just a nice visual for you to, 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 to keep in mind. Okay, so we'll first start to talk about uh, the, the HMI and, and why it's so important for us um, when we talk about visibility versus the MES platform. Because I, I think that one of the things that a lot um, 
of educators might not understand is um, sometimes you'll take an HMI and just uh, put it on a big screen and you'll say, okay, I have my visualization. Well, but that's not true. The, the HMI uh, is very powerful today um, and it should be used uh, for troubleshooting purposes and for system updates. But that MES platform is, is used for a, a, a whole lot more. So let's just talk about the HMI and visualization. Um, and, and for those of you that are on the line, um, of course, Festo Didactic, we, uh, our, our, our key customer um, is gonna be within the education space. Um, but I'll kind of jump back and forth and talk about um, industry and education. And of course, we're going to use screens that we use within our equipment in education. But the, uh, the visualization, the way the screens are designed are for industry. So um, the, the two uh, together should be able to learn um, and, and kind of see what's best practice today. So this screen just shows us as we take a deep dive into HMI, one of our screens that we uh, develop is we give the students or technicians the ability to put a system in default mode. Default mode basically means that it's going to allow that technician to, to troubleshoot the system, um, the HMI, the PLC, and the robot. Uh, and, and what happens is you disconnect from MES. So you're disconnecting from the cloud. You're disconnecting from wherever your, your data correlation system is, okay? Um, and, and basically, students need, need to have a clear understanding that if you're going to parse or try to figure out what's going on on your system level, that you should be able to turn it off turn off the, the top floor and focus on the shop floor. So that's an option that we embed for, um, for troubleshooting purposes. Now, what else do you look for in an HMI um, today? Well, of course, uh, you want to see an image of what you're working on. So here, this is another screen. You can imagine that the operator needs to have uh, the ability to, to say, okay, if I'm working on what we would call a magazine station on the right-hand side, um, but if I want to step through my IOs and see um, if there are inputs that are turning on, if there are outputs turning on, um, I need to be able to see that. And the big thing about HMI visualization and, and collecting the data and exporting it is that, that it tells a story and that everything is clear. Um, many years ago, you go back to a SCADA system or an HMI, and there was so much on a, on a page, you wouldn't know what you're looking at. Um, so, so today, things should be very clear. Um, but again, you're not trying to do it all at the MES or all on one screen. You have several pages that are easy to navigate, and th this is from the troubleshooting vantage point, okay? And that's what the HMI is for. The other thing that you want to see, for example, is here's a conveyor system. The conveyor system has uh, um, an RFID block. So you can see G1, BG1. That's uh, basically the carrier position. Now, Mike talked about RFID data. Uh, and we chose RFID data as, as uh, data as a uh, something that was tangible for Industry 4.0. Point oh, the ability to push 128 bytes of data back and forth um, and be able to, 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 to capture customer data as well as data at the central level and to, into one RFID tag. Uh, we really like that from an educational standpoint, although there are several ways to collect data. But the goal is on the HMI is can I see what I'm doing? Are you actually defining it? And, and that's that, that, that's what's needed in order for operators, for technicians to, um, let me go back. You, the operator should be able to figure out what's wrong with the system um, by way of the pictorial images that are on the HMI. That way the maintenance guy can work on what? Predictive maintenance. The maintenance guy should not be caught for every little problem on a system if you have a good control architecture, if your system is designed properly from the shop floor all the way up to the top. That's going to empower that operator. Um, another screen here that defines uh, a deep dive into RFID data. Um, so again, this is not at the MES level because we are in default mode. 
So you can see the power of HMI and what it's used for. So why do we need that MES when we talk about visualization? Well, let's just watch a quick video that uh, talks about MES. The enormous rise in the quantity of data and the complexity of networking a plant requires developing systems that make the flow of data easy to handle. MES is what we call a manufacturing execution system, and it is the heart of Industry 4.0. This is the layer of controller software that truly connects the top floor, which is your ERP, your Enterprise Resource Planning System, into your actual production shop floor process. The true value of an MES is that you have full interoperability, meaning the shop floor communicates to the top floor. Decisions are made and that goes back down to the shop floor for the implementation instantaneously. This takes all of your data, smart sensors, your condition monitoring, as well as your customer production orders and combines that into a system where we can have dashboards and we can see what our cycle times are, what our idle times are, and how much energy we are actually consuming. It's very important that skilled workers understand intelligent components in order to operate and optimize their facilities. It's also very important that they learn not only the structure, but that they also know how to program the digital facility networks. With the CP Lab, we've implemented MES4, which has all of the same functionality of an industrial MES, but it's built for the classroom, meaning it's easy to implement as an easy user interface, but it still gives you that full interoperability. It still gives you the capability to export data and make decisions to do data analytics. With this interface between research, production, and training, Festo Didactic works on providing learning systems and curriculum which students and skilled workers can actually prepare themselves for digital production and the CP Lab can get you there. So when we think about uh, the MES side of things, uh, we, we, we were able to define HMI, uh, but, but now let's kind of take a deep dive on the visualization side of things when it comes to a strong MES platform and, and, and what you should be looking for. Um, first of all, this slide here uh, kind of takes a, a deep dive into our MES for education platform. And, and one of the screens uh, kind of gives you the heartbeat of the your overall uh, CP factory or your, your complete shop floor. Um, you're able to interrogate the status of uh, your IP addresses, okay? Um, do I have true connectivity? And, and basically, uh, you're looking at uh, red, green, uh, yellow, okay? Am I busy? Uh, but then you also know if uh, you are in default mode or uh, MES mode. So if you go back to HMI, built into the HMI, you have that on-off switch, that says I'm active and now I am actually looking at data that's being pushed to the top floor or am I in troubleshooting mode, default mode where I'm working at the HMI. So when you flip that switch and now you're open to data, um, now you're able to start to really interrogate the visualization and, and what's happening from my ERP system as well as the manufacturing floor all in one place. So that's something that you really want to look for. Um, your home screen uh, should give you an overview of everything that's happening within your manufacturing system. Another key thing to look for in an MES platform for visualization are timestamps. So as you, you put in your customer order um, at every single station, every time the part goes through an operation, you're looking for traceability. And when it comes to traceability, traceability needs to have a storyline to it. So can I read the data and figure out exactly what's happening? Um, the system should also um, have the ability to, to export uh, like a CSV file so that you can uh, download that CS, uh, CSV file uh, to an Excel spreadsheet and try and figure out what's happening uh, throughout my complete manufacturing uh, process throughout that day. But real time, 
an MES system should allow you to look at the timestamps and, and see what's going on, what you see on the left-hand side. Okay, of course, on the right-hand side, you, you see typical graphs, uh, but the, the, again, the, the, the main goal here is to be able to tell a story by way of the data, okay? So here is just another uh, good image of the efficiency report. So Mike uh, touched on OEE, and if your system, if your control architecture is developed properly, um, you're going to be able to find out um, when you're processing your parts, uh, when was my complete overall system idle, and then when did I run it extremely hard. And of course, with, 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 with a, a lean manufacturing environment, um, the technicians uh, the, the, the operators, the engineers, the, the, the goal is efficiency. Uh, so even with the equipment, you don't want to push it too hard because if you push the equipment too hard, what happens is you might be making parts for no reason. Hurry up and wait. So the goal is to balance out your, your complete process. And that's what you're looking for uh, within your MES platform is the ability to pull on several different layers or levers, excuse me, but you're looking for that to be visualized. Within your MES platform, you also pictorial images of what's happening real time. So uh, in this application, we kind of push a, a circuit board with fuses in it. Um, so this is at one phase of the work plan. Um, you can check the status and see, oh, is there one fuse, two fuses? Uh, what was my work order? Uh, and then what actually happened? And do I need to change that part type? But all of that flexibility needs to be readily available and visualized. Something else that you look for within a strong MES platform would be, uh, for example, uh, vibration analysis. So are you able to actually see uh, within the complete system um, vibration? Where is it um, and, and, and is it normal or is it something that uh, this system is running too lean and maybe I need to soften it, slow it down? Uh, but again, you're always following the timestamps. Okay, and then you also just have uh, uh, different ways of showing that data. So uh, this kind of wraps up our discussion. Uh, there's a few tips here that, that, that we uh, would like to just lend to you when it comes to visualization. You can look for solutions that can be deployed seamlessly on top of your existing installation. So uh, when it comes to visualization, it's not just going to be about uh, uh, maybe scrapping your existing system and buying something brand new. But when it comes to visualization, you can begin to bolt on. Um, you also want to use a, a data model. Um, there's also favor communication standards that enable interoperability. So that term interoperability is very important and you need to make sure that your control architecture um, is, is actually built for interoperability, for pushing and pulling data. Um, as we go ahead and close out and we just get a few questions, um, I, I just want to define that as an educator, um, uh, around Industry 4.0, Festo Didactic, we have several partners. I just want to show that um, when it comes to visualization, it's very important that uh, you have an understanding that as an integrator, all of these partners we work very closely with in order to be able to uh, provide st a strong in Industry 4.0 platform for all of our educators out there. With that being said, we want to just thank you for joining us today on uh, Webinar Wednesday, and uh, we can now take some questions. Okay, thank you so much, Ted and Mike. Um, I don't see any questions. If anybody has any questions they want to put in the Q&A box. I think anybody has any questions. So, um, Okay. Well, I just want to say thank you. Thank you very much. And on behalf of CSIA, I would like to thank 
thank Ted and Mike for this informative discussion. And I'd also like to thank all of those that are attending. We hope you found this webinar very informational. And we'd also like to remind you that the recording of this webinar will be available for viewing within a week of this event. Please visit the CSI website to view this recording or a past webinar you may have missed. Um, and this concludes our program for today. And once again, thank you so much for joining us and have a great rest of your day.